My day started like any other. I was sitting on my porch in my favorite, rocking chair, puffing on my pipe, and watching the lazy river meander by. When out of the blue, a shimmering portal opened up, it was like something straight out of a Jules Verne novel, all swirling lights and strange noises. Before I knew it, a lanky figure with a wild mustache and a white suit stepped through. I blinked, rubbed my eyes, and there he was, Mark Twain, the man himself. Twain looked around with wide-eyed wonder, squinting at the strange contraptions whizzing by on the street. Well, I'll be hornswoggled, he muttered, adjusting his body. What intarnation is going on here? I introduced myself, trying not to gawk like a fish out of water. Mr. Twain, welcome to the future. I'm your guide through this here 21st century. His eyes twinkled as he surveyed his surroundings. The future, you say? Well, I reckon I've seen some peculiar things in my day, but this takes the cake. Now, son, where's the nearest saloon? I could use a drink after that confounding journey. We strolled through the streets, dodging self-driving cars and people engrossed in tiny glowing screens. Twain was wide-eyed and slack-jawed at every turn, muttering things like, jumpin', Jehoshaphat, and great horn toads. As we approached a sleek-looking bar, Twain's eyes lit up, now, this looks like my kind of establishment, he exclaimed, pushing open the door. The bar was filled with the hum of conversation and the clinking of glasses, Twain sauntered up to the bartender, who raised an eyebrow at his 19th century attire. I'll have a sarsa perilla, good sir, Twain said with a flourish. The bartender chuckled, we're fresh out of sarsa perilla, but we've got a great selection of craft beers, how, about trying an IPA? Twain squinted suspiciously, IPA, what in tarnation is that, some newfangled abbreviation for, I prefer ale. I laughed, it stands for India Pale Ale, Mr. Twain, it's a type of beer. He took a tentative sip and pulled a face that could curdle milk, well, I'll be horns woggled again, give me a regular ale, any day. As we sat at the bar, Twain regaled me with tales of his adventures, some real, some embellished, but all delivered with his trademark wit. The patrons around us were captivated, raising their glasses to the man who brought Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer into the world. After a hearty round of storytelling, Twain's eyes wandered over to the jukebox in the corner. What in Sam Hill is that contraption? I explained the marvels of modern music and how the jukebox allowed one to choose any song they pleased. Twain grinned mischievously, well, let's see, what kind of ditties they play in this futuristic joint. He approached the jukebox, squinting at the buttons and knobs, after a few fumbled attempts, he managed to select a tune. The room was suddenly filled with the thumping beats of hip-hop Twain, with a twinkle in his eye, started to shuffle his feet in an impromptu dance that would make even the most seasoned breakdancer proud. The patrons erupted into laughter and applause, and Twain took a bow, well, I may not know much about this future business, but I reckon I've still got the moves. As the evening wore on, we decided to explore more of this brave new world, I took Twain to a bustling comedy club, where he found himself in stitches over stand-up routines that riffed on everything from intergalactic travel to the absurdity of selfie sticks. Between fits of laughter, Twain leaned over and whispered, Son, I've seen the Mississippi River flood, but these folks have a flood of words that's just as unstoppable. Our next stop was a high-tech arcade, filled with flashy lights and beeping machines, Twain, never one to back down from a challenge, took on a group of teenagers, in a virtual reality game, with a V or headset perched on his head, and a digital sword in hand, he swung and parried, shouting, by the whiskers of a catfish, I'll not be defeated by these confounded contraptions. The onlookers cheered as Twain, in the virtual realm, emerged victorious, he removed the headset with a triumphant grin, well, I reckon I've still got a trick or two, up my sleeve. As the night wore on, we found ourselves in the heart of the city, surrounded by towering skyscrapers that seemed to touch the stars. Twain craned his neck, his eyes wide with wonder. Now, this here cityscape is something out of a science fiction tale. Back in my day, we thought steamboats were the height of technological marvels. I chuckled, you've certainly had your fair share of time-traveling adventures tonight, Mr. Twain. He tipped his hat, call me Sam, son, and I must say, this future of yours ain't half bad. Though I reckon I'll stick to my trusty riverboat and cool pin back in my own time. As the clock struck midnight, I led Twain back to the shimmering portal that would take him home. He gave me a firm handshake, his eyes gleaming with gratitude. Well, it's been a real hoot, son. I've seen things that would make a cat laugh and heard tales that would make a mule grin. But now, I reckon it's time for me to head back to my own century 
The Mississippi is Callan, my name. With a wave and a twinkle in his eye, Mark Twain stepped back through the portal, disappearing into the folds of time and just like that, my porch, with its rocking chair and peaceful river, returned to its usual quiet splendor. As I sat there, contemplating the absurdity and hilarity of the evening, I couldn't help but marvel at the timeless humor and charm of Mark Twain. Even in the strange world of the 21st century, his wit and wisdom had shone through, leaving a trail of laughter and good-natured antics in his wake. And so, under the moonlit sky, I rocked on my porch, thinking that perhaps, in the grand tapestry of time, humor was the thread that wove us all together, past, present, and future. The next morning, as the sun cast its golden glow over the river, I couldn't shake off the surreal memories of the night before, Mark Twain, that literary luminary from a bygone era, had traversed time to experience the quirks and wonders of the 21st century, I chuckled to myself, half expecting to see him emerge from behind a tree, clad in his iconic white suit and with that unmistakable mustache framing his wry smile. As I sipped on a cup of coffee, contemplating the whimsical events of the previous evening, a rustling sound caught my attention, to my astonishment, emerging from the dense foliage on the riverbank was none other than Mark Twain himself, looking every bit as bewildered as he had the night before. Well, I'll be darned, I exclaimed, nearly spilling my coffee, back for another round, Mr. Twain. Twain adjusted his hat and flashed a mischievous grin, seems I've gotten myself into another heap of trouble, son, woke up in this peculiar century without so much as a fare thee well. I couldn't help but burst into laughter, well, welcome back, Sam, looks like you're getting the hang of time travel. Twain surveyed his surroundings, his eyes squinting in the morning sun, time travel, you say, ain't that a kick in the head? One moment, I'm tippin', my hat to you through that whirligig contraption, and the next, I'm standin', here with a whole day min. I explained the intricacies of time travel, or as much as I understood them, and offered to show him around the 21st century once more, Twain, ever the adventurer, agreed with a twinkle in his eye. Our second day together took us to places even more bewildering for the 19th century wordsmith, we ventured into a bustling farmer's market, where Twain marveled at the kaleidoscope of fruits and vegetables on display. By the beard of a riverboat captain, what in thunderation are these colorful round things, he asked, pointing at a display of exotic fruits. I chuckled, those, Sam, are called dragon fruits, trust me, they taste nothing like dragons, want to give one a try. Twain eyed the peculiar fruit suspiciously, but eventually took a bite, his face contorted in surprise, well, I'll be a pickled catfish, that's downright peculiar, but not half bad. Next on our journey through time was a visit to a bustling bookstore, Twain ran his fingers along the spines of countless books, a nostalgic gleam in his eyes. In my day, the printed word was a precious treasure, now it seems folks have more stories than they know what to do with, ain't that a curious twist of fate? As we explored the bookstore, I couldn't resist introducing Twain to the wonders of electronic readers his eyes widened as he held one in his hands. Well, I never thought I'd see the day when folks carry libraries in their pockets, what a time to be alive. The afternoon found us in a park, surrounded by people jogging, picnicking, and enjoying the sun, Twain, perched on a bench, observed the scene with a bemused expression. In my day, folks took leisurely strolls along the river banks, but here, they're running, like the devils on their tail, what's the rush, son? I chuckled, well, Sam, they say it's all about staying fit and healthy, a notion that's become quite popular. Twain scratched his head, healthy as a river cat, I suppose, but I reckon I'll stick to my slow saunters, no need to wear out my boots in a hurry. As the day unfolded, we found ourselves in a comedy club once again, where Twain's laughter echoed through the room, this time, though, he had a revelation. You know, son, I've been pondering on this humor business, seems to me, no matter the century, Folks can't resist a good laugh, it's like a river flowing, through time, unburdened by the troubles of the world. The evening brought us to a vibrant jazz club, where Twain tapped his foot to the infectious rhythms, as the night embraced us, we sat by the river once more, watching the moonlight dance on the water. Twain puffed on his pipe, and spoke with a reflective tone, son, I've had the privilege of seeing, the future, and I must say, it's a peculiar yet wondrous place, but you know what remains timeless, the human spirit, the yearning for laughter, and the simple joy of sharing, stories, now, that's something, that'll never go out of style. As the stars twinkled above us, we basked in the shared warmth of a friendship that spanned centuries, Mark Twain, 
the irrepressible humorist, had once again left his indelible mark on the present, proving that no matter the era, a good laugh and a kindred spirit could bridge the gaps of time. And so, under the vast canvas of the night sky, we rocked on my porch, two kindred souls connected by laughter, stories, and the timeless magic of a friendship that defied the boundaries of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you would like to see more of our original stories, then please like and subscribe, and share and leave comments.